you just had your second argument with your manager today. Your manager was rude and called you incapable. By the way, this is not the manager who hired you and made sure you got everything you needed to have a fulfilling career. This is an interim manager who just joined a couple of weeks ago and already decided to put you on a performance improvement plan, which was the biggest surprise you've had in your career since you've had a career. Okay, you got more certifications than anyone else in the team. You are part of a serval of the serverless technical field community, TFC, and you were voted a serverless MVP once. And right now you are working to get to another TFC, the IoT technical field community. You worked hard to get the AWS public speaking certification and you do a lot of public speaking to solve problems at scale, to help AWS customers and enthusiasts all across the world through a YouTube channel, through blog posts, through a ton of contributions to various AWS open source uh, repos, through contributions to serverless, serverless land. And you are an official AWS community builder. You're called upon to join meetings from all over Canada to assist other SAs with their serverless workloads. You cover Canada East and work hand in hand with French and English speaking customers on a daily basis. And your direct customers love working with you. How do you know that? Well, when you decided to leave AWS, one of your direct AWS customers was very happy to have you join them and keep working with them. So by AWS metrics, you've been a rock star all along. And by your peers and your customers' testimony, you've been a solid solutions architect. But this new interim manager decided after a couple of weeks that you should be put on a PIP. And you feel this manager believes he already got you figured out based on he says, she says. I mean, if we work together, then you know uh, I have strong opinions and you know that I'm not the easiest to convince, but isn't have backbone, disagree, and commit one of Amazon leadership principles. Anyway, now everything you do is monitored, observed, put under a loop. You've been asked to produce a report, a daily report of your activities every day. And you've been long enough in the game to know what this means. You're being pushed out. So every day becomes a struggle. Every breath you take is monitored. You spend your day documenting what you did for the state manager to review rather than doing the job you were hired to do, helping AWS customers. See, this is not the company you worked very hard to join. The company you defend and preach its greatness every time you make a YouTube video. But all is not lost. You decide to try something else. You decide to switch teams. This is something AWS encourages very much, right? Well, the thing is, it takes your manager approval to do so. And guess what the said manager does? He blocks the transfer. And it was at that moment that you decided you want to quit this horrible position. Being subjected to this ridicule is not worth it. Nothing is worth it. I'm not 18 anymore, for God's sake. I, I have nothing to prove to anyone. I found myself, or you found yourself thinking. So this is my story of why I left AWS. This is the story that confirms the old saying is real. You don't quit your job, you quit your boss. So you've all been asking me why I left AWS for more than a year and I was not going to make yet another BS video and say the same BS of I was looking for another challenge, blah, 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 just for the sake of making a video. So I know I'm going probably to make some enemies with this video, but I'm going to go through with it. Anyway, you've been supporting my journey in the cloud since I started this YouTube channel three years ago. So. I owe it to you. So let's keep going. You start to look for your next role and it doesn't take you long to get an offer from another competitor. I still got it. You shout. You know, you, you always struggled with imposter syndrome 
and maybe that's why you always bullied yourself to do more than what's required. And these past few weeks made you doubt yourself even more. But, you know, this is an offer from a very respectable competitor and it helps you get back your confidence. You make the announcement to your manager and your access is cut right away as per AWS policies. Congratulations, now you're out. Well, now your friends are shocked. You shouldn't have done this, they say. You start getting calls from uh, former colleagues right now wondering why you left. No one saw it coming. I reminded them that I didn't see it coming either. It all happened in three, four, five weeks tops. But only your partner understand the decision because of the many times they've witnessed the absurdity of arguments you'd be getting to with your now previous manager. Only your partner noticed how stressed you've become, how Sunday evenings become unbearable as you think of yet another week of stress, of ridicule. So you remind people that you should always go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. After all, that was the very reason uh, you left France for Canada a decade ago. You know, life is too short not to feel welcome somewhere. And you're an immigrant, you've changed continents, you've changed countries uh, for the hope of a better life. So what's changing a company next to that? A week goes by and you can breathe again. You pick up your hobbies, hiking in the woods, urban photography, and you even make some weird purchasing decisions. But you breathe again. You realize how much of a stress this whole situation have put you under. You realize how working every day until 8 p.m. and working on weekends have taken a toll on you. You take a deep breath, you know you've made the right choice. You know that nothing is worth your mental health. Funny enough, you start hearing how more and more people are quitting the job. The recent structure changes don't seem to be appreciated. And you think to yourself, okay, so I was not the only one. And that feels for a second like a relief. After all, AWS is even announcing a hike in salaries to try and retain its tech employees. But you don't care anymore. A job is a job. Life goes on. So friends, there you have it, why I left AWS, raw and simple, and I tried very hard not to blame anyone. And who knows, maybe it was my performance. And although without false modesty, I highly, very highly doubt it. Or maybe it was an internal restructuring. I know that being a manager in a FANG company is very hard because you are put under so much stress from upper management and you're pretty much left to your own to make decisions left and right and center. Or maybe I was being judged as a salesman, which I'm not, and I stand by it. I was hired to be a solutions architect, not a salesperson. And if someone somewhere changed the job description, I didn't get the memo. So this is my story. I hope I answered your questions. I try not to be a fanboy of anything, whether it's a smartphone, whether it's an operating system, whether it's a cloud provider. That being said, AWS is still my bread and butter and I still use it every day as part of my professional tasks, but also when I'm building personal uh, projects. And if you follow me on Twitter or if you join the community, you know what I'm talking about. So if you wanna take anything from this video, let it be that <sighs> Some things you just can't control. Some things are just out of your hand and know when to walk away because no job is worth your mental health. That's it and see you guys in the next video. Peace out. That's done.